Yeah, Miss Harrington, I have a question. Okay, shoot. Can you teach me about climate change, please? Sure. I have this whole speech I lined up just for this. Okay, first of all, I would like you to know that climate change is a very big current and future global issue. I also believe that if this issue is not attended to in a very short amount of time, this world and the generations to come will suffer greatly and will not be able to enjoy the world we know today when they are alive. There are a few issues that we can address on the topic of climate change and global warming. For example, how will it affect the way we live? How will we grow our food? How will it affect the migration patterns and habitats of many animals? How does deforestation affect the earth? Who produces the most CO2 in the world? And what can we do to help reduce the greenhouse gases? The effects that scientists had predicted in the past would result from global climate change are now occurring right now. The loss of sea ice, accelerated sea level rise, and longer, more intense heat waves. This also goes with longer and stranger weather, weather patterns, resulting in more extreme tornadoes, hurricanes, and stuff like that, and tsunamis. These are all issues that need solutions and that need to be discussed or else the human race is in for a very rough time in the future. Climate change has observable effects on the environment already. The Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, IPCC, which includes more than 1,300 scientists from the United States and other countries, forecasts a temperature rise of 2.5 to 10 degrees Fahrenheit over the next century. This quote from the NASA website is very concerning to me because 2.5 degrees Fahrenheit is a very drastic increase, which will obviously cause the polar ice caps to melt, causing our sea levels to rise, which, and that will also cause us to lose parts of land that are at or just above sea level, like Amsterdam or any other places, such as Argentina, Australia, Belgium, Netherlands, China, and Denmark. And obviously there's much more countries than these, but that's just a few. These countries, when sea levels rise, may not be there anymore, because causing people, many people to flee and lose the places where they grew up and loved. Everything as scientists are guessing, the oceans will rise to one to four feet by 2100, which may not seem like a lot, but it is very significant, which will also cause more very strong hurricanes and more frequent destructive storms. <clears throat> Climate change will also affect how we live because as the earth, get, earth gets warmer, there will be more heat waves and droughts. So possibly places that normally used to grow crops become hot and have now become deserts or wastelands, and places that normally don't grow crops begin to have the perfect weather to grow crops. Like an example, 2016, you could grow wheat in Kansas because of its superb temperature, which makes it very good for growing crops, and Winnipeg is too cold to grow wheat. As the earth grows warmer and warmer, that crop growing pocket will move farther up north, and maybe in 2116, Winnipeg will have the perfect wheat weather, and Kansas will be a dry, hot desert. We're seeing lots of agriculture effects with this, too. Fishing, the migration patterns of animals will be severely impacted directly due to climate change. This is because as the world's temperature increases, the more the ice caps melt, the ambient temperature of the north will increase, forcing animals to move northwards so they can be in those warmer areas. Like for example, Canadian geese fly to the southern United States or Mexico because in the winter it is quite warm. But as time goes on and the temperature on the sun rise, on the earth rises, the geese will move more north in the summer and they will not go down as far in the winter. They may only fly down to Kansas or Nebraska now, those states at the temperature of the, north, the southern states like Texas and Mexico. And then in the spring, they will fly up to Nunavut because when they get, it will be too warm for them. Deforestation really contributes to climate change quite directly because forests cover about 30% of the world's land area, but patches the size of Panama are lost every year due to deforestation. If we continue at our current rate of deforestation, there will be no more rainforest in 100 years. Forests serve many purposes. 70% of Earth's animals and plants live in forests. Trees serve a crucial role in the water cycle by returning water vapor back into the atmosphere. <coughs> trees keep forest soil moist by blocking the sun, and most importantly, trees absorb the greenhouse gases that fuel global warming. Deforestation and land use change and land use change contribute approximately 20 to 25 percent of the carbon emissions that cause climate change. So basically, uh, the more deforestation we do, the more carbon dioxide we release into the atmosphere, and then even more greenhouse gases will be released. And whatever happens after they clear cut that forest will probably become a factory or a housing complex, which will release even more greenhouse gases 
which hurts the earth even more, unfortunately. Studies show that OECD, Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development, countries produce 9.9 .9 metric tons per capita of CO2 in 2011. And Caribbean small stats were second with 9.7 metric tons per capita produced. Keep in mind that OE OCED countries include Canada, the United Kingdom, the United States, Spain, and Japan, which is a lot of CO2 being pumped into the atmosphere, which in turn is damaging the ozone layer, forcing climate change. Now, does that answer your question about what climate change is? Yes. Also, what are some solutions to prevent climate change? I'm glad you asked. You're so smart. There are many simple solutions to climate change, and those simple solutions can be very minimal to us. And if mostly everyone in the world does a few of these solutions, I believe we can greatly reduce the changing of climate and global warming. I think that if we forego using fossil fuels like burning coal, oil, and natural gas as time goes on, because it produces a lot of greenhouse gases, so we could probably use nuclear power, though it does not emit greenhouse gases, it emits nuclear waves. But it counts, and we can use alternatives like wind or solar panel, solar power and biodiesel because it helps every little bit. The easier alternative is to just simply buy fewer things, whether it is by not using a vehicle and walking, or biking places and being and using reusable grocery bags. Or if you insist on buying a new vehicle, maybe go for a hybrid options that is more environmentally friendly. Or even buying groceries in bulk to reduce packaging. Be efficient, that's all you have to do. Whether it is turning your lights off after you leave the room or buying a fuel-efficient vehicle, if not a hybrid. Good car maintenance, like making sure the tires are properly inflated, makes the greenhouse gas, em gas emissions a bit less because the gas takes it. The gas t it takes to move it around with perfectly inflated tires is less than underinflated tires. Also, even employing more efficient air co conditioners and refrigerators and other environmentally friendly utilities to reduce the energy consumption. You can also become vegetarian. Meat-eating people produce 1.5 tons more greenhouse gases through their food because it takes diesel trucks to bring their livestock to the farms, and those livestock produce manure, which produces CO2, which goes into the atmosphere. Not to mention, it takes a lot more land space to grow livestock rather than just regular crops. Finally, stop cutting down trees. Trust me, it will help us out in the long run. Yes, you won't be able to build those fancy apartment complexes or that mall or that factory. But I think keeping the earth a bit more healthy is pretty important, not to mention that every year, 33 million acres of forests are cut down. Timber harvesting in the tropics alone contributes to 1.5 billion metric tons of carbon to the atmosphere. That represents 20% of human-made greenhouse gas emissions, and a source that could be avoided relatively easy. Every little part counts, and you doing your part to save this planet, as well as everyone else doing their part, will save this planet. I, we owe you a tremendous debt as well. Were it not for your 20th century garbage making skills, we'd all be buried under 20th century garbage. Should we really be celebrating? I mean, what if the second garbage ball returns to Earth like the first one did? Well, who cares? That won't be for hundreds of years. Exactly. It's none of our concern. That's the 20th century spirit. Uh -huh.